Happy Sunday, everybody. Good morning. We are ready to continue on with some more Alan Wake 2. And looks like we're getting close up to the final stretch of the game. Um, we are going to start off by flipping over to Alan's scenario. What I'm told is that after this one, we, it locks us out of his plot for a while. Until we finish up more of Saga's part of the plot. But anyways, hello! Um, if anyone is finding this stream as your first introduction to the channel, I just wanted to say hello. My name is Dean. We mostly do uh, long-form video essays on this channel that deal with like the literature, storytelling, and all the thematics in uh, video games. We mostly handle the Remedyverse, but we also do stuff like um, Psychonauts, God of War. I have a series, a full series on Hellblade that's going to continue once the second game comes out. And there's some uh, one-offs around floating around here as well hello everybody in chat you guys are all doing <laughs> hope your days are going well oh you're from norway jules well welcome greetings from the west coast of the u.s oh don't worry isaac i'm gonna check out the lighthouse before we continue with saga story but for today because i am again i'm on another time crunch i'm gonna get straight into alan's part of the plot because i heard this one's a little bit longer so we're going to go straight over there, and the next time we get an opportunity, then we'll run to the lighthouse, continue on with Saga's plot, and go from there. I will neither confirm nor deny if I'm a peri-utilitarian melancholy. I cannot confirm. Mm. Oh, boy. Give me a second, guys. I completely forgot to refill my water. I'll be right back. We are back. What's up, generally break? Not much. You look from Ohio. <laughs> Hello from Ohio, then. What's going on, Zell? I'm sorry, Hartman. You're just hearing you saying, remember, hydrate or dihydrate. All I'm thinking about is zydrate. <sighs> if anyone's familiar with the genetic opera, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, just taking my morning pills. Just like church would tell you. For any Left 4 Dead fans out there. Alright, we're going to go ahead and get going. Hey there, Kenyatta. Let's go ahead and get this going. Um, Because yesterday I had my nephew's birthday. Tonight I have my mother's birthday. So I was planning on trying to get through as much today as I can before we run out. Let's turn up my volume a little bit. And again, let me know how the audio syncing and the level is as soon as we get in. I did my little fix to take care of the desync issue, but just in case, there we go. Let's just at least talk to them, then we'll run. Scratches wakes double. He tricked us. He almost got the clicker from me. The whole plan has gone out the window. How could we get this so wrong? Textbook boondoggle. boondoggle. You said it, Anderson. It's a shit show. So what's the plan? Hey there, thanks so much, Jules, for the donation. I uh, just wanted to say thanks for all your work. I love all your lore videos. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. I've Those have... I didn't even realize I'd be still doing this because I only planned to make seven videos for YouTube and then stop. I had like seven very specific topics to cover and I was like, okay, that'll be done. And then Control came out and then I found more to talk about and here we are four years later. <laughs> All right. The FBC usually handles stuff like this, right? Any thoughts? Hold up. You brought a paranatural object in here without telling me and then almost handed it over to a hostile entity? I didn't know if I could trust you. That was a mistake. 
So was believing Scratch. But it's not too late. I just need to understand more. <laughs> you got that right. Let's start acting like we're on the same side, yeah? Are we, though? All right. Well, I don't know. Should we just, like, come back? Nah, let's finish the conversations. And then we'll switch over. The horror story is changing reality. It made it so my daughter died here, even though she's supposed to be back home in Virginia. Do you know if that's... Uh... AWEs are localized distortions of reality. The area outside town might not be affected. Sometimes they expand, sometimes they fizzle out. If we can make sure it's the latter, your kid might be fine. The whole thing is a nightmare. I can't let my family be torn apart. Having family isn't easy in this line of work. The late nights, travel, alternate realities threatening their existence. My ex-wife couldn't take it. Karen, you're better off without her. I know I am. So tell me what I'm missing. The FBC must know something. Good news, we have Bureau Intel on all of this. Bad news, it's highly classified. Good news, consider yourself deputized into the Federal Bureau of Control. Here's a key to the cell where we keep the files. Oh, shit. Happy reading. Okay. I like that. Um, thanks. Deputized, okay. Go team. I will take that, thank you. You really don't remember Logan living in Virginia with me and David? Uh, I remember you and David having problems. You needed a break. You and Logan moved to Watery and... And then, uh... Then Logan... Well, that awful thing happened. After you came back to work, I thought you'd be the perfect partner for this case. If you were willing to return to the area. Okay. That's enough. The story is changing your memories. What you're remembering is fiction. Logan is alive. I'm not divorced. We never moved here. I remember the truth. No, no, no. Wake or Scratch, whoever that was, said the story could be used to attack us. We all need to question what's real. With that said, how do we know the story isn't giving you false hope? I can't convince them. I just need to change the story. The only reason I would say it's not, it's not that is because having her um, daughter directly tied into the stakes of the plotline is a motivating force. I mean, there'd be no mo motivating force to say, oh, yeah, your daughter's fine in another town. Probably in another state entirely. No, by saying, like, okay, if you do not succeed, your daughter will die. That is a motivating force for the character. So it's more likely that that was the alteration and not the other thing around. Scratch pretended to be Wake to trick us. He almost won me over. I should have trusted my gut. I had a bad feeling about him when we found him at the lake. When that insane monster cloud came at me in the woods, I saw a face inside it. Wakes. I think he was always a monster. Always scratch. That's what I said. All right, is. Oh. Let's not go in there. Uh, do we have a temporal shift down in the basement? Rocket flare, save point, maintenance break room. Let's go. And then we'll fully examine this, but for right now, we need to get over there. Oh, shit. I'm sorry about your brother, Elmo. Yuck was all hard. He always went along with my ideas, no matter how stupid they were. Always happy to help. I got carried away. I never think things through. It's my fault. I realize it's a bad time. But I need you to tell me everything about the cult of the tree. The cult is my craziest idea that ever worked. <laughs> Look, what kind of a cult calls themselves a cult? Exactly. We protect Watery and Bright Falls. We're the good guys. A secret neighborhood watch. Well, 
That was the idea anyways. Look, we've always known about the horror inside the lake. When any Taken come out, we kill them. You don't turn people into Taken. You kill the ones who already have. How long has the cult been around for? Certain folks around here have always known about Cauldron Lake. Before us, it was the torchbearers. And when I inherited the mission, I wanted to call it a cult. <laughs> it was genius. Just a name did half the work. Made people too scared to go into the woods at night. Business 101. Yep. Fear is a great motivator. 100%. You were trying to kill Alan Wake. Why? Nothing good has ever come out of Cauldron Lake. The nightmare that hit Bright Falls in 2010 was all because of his writing. And ever since then, pages of his stories are floating up from the lake, and monsters keep popping out. It's all him, Wake. And if we don't stop him, no one will. Wake's evil doppelganger scratches the threat we're facing. Not Wake. And I will stop him. I've never heard of anyone called Scratch. Again, working off of incomplete information. This was, it's like, it's hard to be angry at them because they were legitimately keeping the town safe. They were legitimately keeping the town safe, but again, they, when you act without full info, it's, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and swap over to Alan. Where is it? Where is it? There's not one in here. We might have to go back to, um... Yeah, we might have to head back out to the lodge. Okay, sorry. If you fall the kid, is that here? Shit, all these bits are... Yeah, so if... Yeah, so if the uh, story shifts to the point where Logan did, in fact, die, then that's gonna be history. But it was confirmed in um, Control that the effects of the story only affect what's directly referenced in the story. Uh, this. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, this way. The ones that might kill me. So anything That's outside funny. the story is completely unaffected. Cases that might kill me were my ex's favorite. Sorry, I'm eavesdropping in your guys' moment. I apologize. Okay, thank you for policing spoilers in chat, Kenita. I very much appreciate it. So, the rules are no spoilers, no suggestions, no hints, no... Oh, I'll say this as a tease, and he won't understand. None of that. Because I... I'm going to skip that for right now. Because I know this series too well inside and out, but even small uh, little subtle hints, I'll understand what's I going on. I think you may be right. Might have been a mistake to come here. I don't think Marcy's coming back. Fuck, Riley. This is so messed up. I know. I'm sorry. Hey, it's not your fault. We all knew what we were signing up for. Uh, I'm actually interested in following their plot line. I think you may be right. <laughs> oh, there might have been a mistake to come They're repeating here. this stuff right there. Hey there, Archangel. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. You're at back. work. We'll try to follow. Uh, no Riley, worries, dude. This is so messed up. I know. I know how that is. Like I, when I'm at work, I constantly watch like uh, Twitch and live streams too. So I get the feeling. If anything, you're the one getting spoiled. <laughs> well, like, and, and that's some, something too. I apologize about uh, Zell. Um, because I will be talking about any other games in the franchise, including Control, Alan Wake, Quantum Break, the Max Payne games, even Death Rally. And I seriously doubt it's ever going to come up, but technically speaking, Crossfire X has links to Max Payne, so who freaking knows? Alright. Let's get back into the dark place. Half the time, they're 
not as prepared as they think they are. Let's go. That's how we get back. Okay, what were we doing here again? We had just had that scenario with door. Okay, so that locks us in here. Let's get out of the movie studio and back out onto the streets. To get to Parliament Tower, I needed to find a murder site. Zane would know where to find one. Okay, so we're going back to the hotel then. What's that? Ooh, we got a new echo. Oh, there it is. Inside this messy maze of blood trails I was chasing the cult through, I ran into the filmmaker, Thomas Zane, an esoteric bohemian with a hard-on for acts of cruelty performed in the name of occult nonsense. A director wants to control every aspect of the world in their films. Is a cult leader any different? Was Zane just another alias for Scratch? There was a rumor that Wake and Zane had been working on something together. I was going to get the truth out of Zane with whatever means necessary. Yeah, I 100% think that this version of Zane is just another dark entity. It's not actually Zane. Hey there, thank you so much, uh, Tori McFarlane. You think Quantum Break 2 has a chance now that uh, Microsoft and Remedy are talking? Now, I think that's what their discussions are about. Well, like, the biggest reason why I don't buy the entire concept of Zane as a poet actually comes down to the first time we're told he is a filmmaker and not a poet. If you remember, Jessie the entire time, even in her therapy sessions, mentions Tom Zane as the poet. But the second that she peeks behind the spiral door and sees the scene of Alan in the ocean view, immediately she's like, oh, no, 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 he's a filmmaker. I keep forgetting, I keep remembering that wrong. No, he was always been a filmmaker. I mean, that's not something you just forget. Her memory was altered to match the story. So if that was the alteration, therefore the new alteration is not the original reality. So, yeah, I don't buy it. Dude, I haven't trusted Zane since, what, 2020, when they dropped the DLC. Zane's room, 665, was upstairs. The elevator would take me there. I am not gonna be fighting those guys whatsoever. No, Parliament Tower is just the building that they used to live in. It's it's a fabrication of the dark place Alan created because that's where him and Alice used to live. Like honestly, the ocean view is the closest we're getting to the oldest house in this game. Flare gun ammo. Let's save some of the flare gun ammo just so I don't overuse it. Um, let's save some of the flashbangs. Actually, no. We already have four stocked up. But let's save some of the painkillers. Okay. And what is our... Okay, so we got flare gun. We got regular flares. We got heals on that. Let's go ahead and get our painkillers quick slotted up to here. But again, like, I don't, like, the oldest house really isn't in this game so far, but the closest we can get, because technically the uh, black pyramid door, actually, we can go look at it real quick, if you guys are okay with it. Because technically speaking, let's, this, no, that's the, I think it's upstairs, actually. No, I'm awake. I 
go take a look, just for the fun of it. What's the room? Sorry, I haven't written down what room it is. Um, where is it? Doors, Vanguard, White Pyramid, 2-2, two, two, Control, Night Springs, 2-1-1. So, room 2-1-1. <laughs> Where is room 211? Huh, I'm not seeing it now. But anyways, one of the rooms on here has the inverted black pyramid on it, and that's going to be the door that leads into the oldest house. Like these simple doors right here, yes. Yeah. So one of those leads directly to the oldest house, but we're not going to be able to get there. Because remember, you can only enter through a door if you have previously exited through it. So Alan, for example, can only get through the spiral door because, again, that's the room he is used to being through. Alright, let's head on up. God. Yeah, no zombie stories in this. Technically, Alan has written a zombie story, though. Aaron Boy. Those were like immortal cannibals, though. It wasn't really zombies, per se, but anyways. And this is a shameless plug. If anyone's interesting, we did a full audiobook of Aaron Boy, which was Alan's one of Alan's first published uh, works. It's a short story he did. And if you check out the channel recently in the Alan Wake Files playlist, you'll find a full audio book of that. There's a lot of people um, who helped voice it, including Generally Brick, which I don't know if you're still in the chat, but he helped voice some of the characters in it. But anyways, let's get going. All right, we're going to have another drug trip. Let's do this. Something told me Zane wouldn't be happy to see me this time. That doesn't look like a good... I don't think he looks very happy right now. I'm in control now. The second you try anything, I will shoot you in the head! Scratch wrote return, not me! You're a fucking liar! You'd given up. You stopped writing. You said it was too dangerous, that, that we didn't deserve to get out. And then he showed up. Scratch. He promised to write. To get me the hell out of here. He was magnificent. A visionary. I mean, it was art. finished. It took return and left me behind. It's still here, and so is he. I know I fucked up. But you can still catch him before he gets out. Before he gets to your wife. And when you get to him, don't hesitate. Kill the bastard for what he did to us. There's a murder site. In my cinema, where my film Nightless Night is playing. I told you not to try anything! Definitely don't trust this. <sighs> oh, it's so much. And 
And again, another version of the hole in the head. Oh, mercy. Thousands have gone missing beyond the labyrinth of me. Ooh, another one of his books. When you're lost, you're lost in your own company. And cut! Now that is drama. Freaking Christ. What the fuck? I had a million questions about Zane, but I had more pressing concerns. Oh, gosh. I'm still not buying this. I'm still not buying this at all. Like personally, I'm still under the impression. Okay, so if anyone who missed the video that I put out regarding the two Zanes theory, really what it comes down to is this. Oh boy. So in the this House of Dreams blog, when Samantha finds um, Zane's shoebox in the attic and starts reading some of his poetry, and then she has an encounter with the FBC and blah, 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 blah. Um, the very last entry on her blog is her recounting a dream she had when essentially she is shown Thomas Zane's last poem, the one he wrote before diving into the lake with the body, the essence of Barbara, who was corrupted by the Dark Presence at that time. And essentially what happened is on his way down... Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and read it. Let's just read it out. Let me find it online real quick. House of Dreams blog, Alan Wake. Yeah, let's just read this so I'm not paraphrasing the thing. All right. So let's switch over to the computer. Right here. I had another strange dream, very different from the previous ones. This was not a nightmare, quite the contrary. The diver from the photos appeared to me. Thomas Zane is what she's referring to. He looked nothing like in the photos, but it was the same man. He was the poet who had written the poems as well. In the dream, he floated in the air above me in the bedroom as though he were underwater. He was wearing a strange heavy diving suit, almost like a space suit, and he was shining with a bright light. He told me things that in the dream made perfect sense, but now not so much. I've made a habit of keeping a notebook and a pen by my nightstand so that I can write down my dreams as I wake up. But even then, I feel that I missed or misunderstood a lot of what he told me, already beginning to forget it while I'm writing it down. Also, when I read through my own notes, some of them make no sense, but afterwards, and still now, I feel shaken by the powerful emotion I felt in the dreams. I try to explain the dream as well as I can. The diver told me that a dark presence had taken over his girlfriend, the woman in the photos. He tried everything he could to think of to banish her from, uh, banish it from her, but everything failed. In the end, he finally understood what he had to do, finally understood the true nature of the dark place that was hidden under the waves of the lake where they lived. The lake was an opening to a dark place that was much bigger than the lake itself. In fact, much bigger than the whole universe we live in. He wrote one last poem, his masterpiece, a secret poem, a hidden poem, a poem that's not among the poems I've found in the shoebox, and he took his girlfriend for one last dive. Together they sank down into the depths, far deeper than he had ever dived before. In the dream, I was there, diving with them, and from the depths something or some things surged up to meet them things of darkness, but bright things of light as well. The diver explained that these things, or these presences, were forever fighting a war between the forces of light and darkness. A dark presence had taken over his girlfriend, and a bright presence now came to take over him, and he surrendered his body to it. But at the same time, the essence of who he was kept diving deeper, even deeper, holding the essence of his girlfriend, their spirits, their souls. The diver, or what was left of him, his true self, spoke the words of his secret poem. The poem described a new world, an island in the sea of darkness, 
the safe haven, a paradise, a baby universe. The nature of the dark place was such that anything dreamed up there, any dream of war dream or work of art would come true, just as true as anything in our world can be. And the poem came true, and the essence of the diver and the essence of his girlfriend escaped from the darkness and disappeared into the new world to live there happily ever after. While their shapes, his now taken over by a bright presence, and his girlfriend's had been taken over by a bright, a dark presence, surged up through the opening in the lake to our world to continue their battle there. So... Essentially, that's what we know of the essence of the original version of Thomas Zane. Now, the, the crux of my hypothesis when it comes to the two Zane theory is that when Alan got to the cabin at the beginning of the first game, he saw remnants of the real guy's life. He saw poetry in a shoebox. He saw a picture of a diver up in the study. He saw a calendar on the wall that was flipped over to July of 1970. And he saw TZ and BJ... Uh, made in hearts on one of the tree stumps and essentially what he did is when he started writing he used these symbols that he recognized to create a new story and that story included a character named thomas zane which he basically copied everything he could figure out in the cabin and in doing so he created a new thomas zane in the dark place that's not the same thing as the original person because, again, it's like he made a fan fiction, a parody of the original person's life, who took on a life of its own. And in my opinion, the Zane we've been seeing throughout this and throughout AWE is the secondary Zane. The one that Alan created as part of his story, but it's not related to the real person. At least, as far as the information I have currently, that's the best I got. Let's go. I had to find the movie theater poet cinema. The next murder site was there. Zane had created the film in tandem with Return to escape the dark place. Okay, let's see what we got in here. Nothing new. Yeah, so in the first game, really, it's the bright presence we've been speaking to. It's not even really Zane himself. It's an entity called the Bright Presence who is cast to play the role of Thomas Zane within the story. Did he... Did the elevator disappear? <laughs> oh, no. There it is. No, Jack. So, what they're referring to is that... Essentially, Zane's final poem created a brand new universe that he... Him and Barbara occupied. So the original people are perfectly fine. Or at least their essence is. Which also gives the suggestion that the Dark Place can be used to create universes. From scratch. No pun intended. Meaning that it's very possible that the Control Universe, the Alan Wake Universe that we occupy now, could have been created by someone else at some point in the past. I already ran out of this one. I read this one. Zane had lied to me. He scratch wrote return. Zane was a liar. He had secrets. He knew where the murder sites were. I'd make him tell the truth. Zane had worked with Scratch, but Scratch had left him behind. There's a murder site at the cinema where Zane's film is playing Nightless Night. A companion piece to return. Let's go outside and see if we can find that theater. Uh. 
Hey there, Marion. Um, so in terms of the thumbnails, I just have a list of all the chapter titles, and um, my editor, Yellow Bat, gave me photographs to use. He's already finished the whole game, and he gave me pictures to use for the thumbnails. I could see the searchlight beams of the movie theater on the far side of the plaza. Car wash, Port Island, talk show, Wheeler, Poet Cinema. There it is, right there on the other side of the car wash. Quick! I I don't want to deal with you guys right now. I, that freaking car right there is the bait of my existence. Decided to say, hey, yeah, we're gonna start messing with you now. Alright, let's stick with the right revolver since I have the most ammo right now. takes us into the car wash, but then works our way around. Okay. Okay. Let's get going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Annoying mooks. You know what? Just to save some batteries. The light cut through the darkness. I kind of like his enemies only because you With Saga's side of the story, every enemy you come across you know is going to attack you, and this one you really have no idea which ones will and which ones won't try to attack you. I couldn't get in. I was missing something. That really sets me on edge. Yotun <laughs> Yo, Nightless Nights, Thomas Sainfield. So there is something here. There's going to be one of those awards of power here somewhere. Okay, I 
was literally pulling out a flare right there, but I guess it didn't come out fast enough. Zane means gift for God. Okay. Which might refer to him in the first game more than in this one. And again, like when it comes to trying to find use the etymology of shit, where am I? Wake. Oh god, I have to go all the way back. Um, when it comes to using etymology of names to determine what the character's gonna do, it it's not always useful because sometimes a name's just a name. A cigar is just a cigar, as Corey would say. But when we have I could names... see the searchlight beams of the movie theater on the far side of the plaza. But when we know the character and then go back and look at the name, we get better ideas if it is relevant or not. I mean, like, Emil Hartman is a perfect name for who he is. Emil being rooted from the Latin amelos, meaning an imitation, or like a faux, fake copy. And Hartman, if you remove the H, is just Artman. So his name literally, Emil Hartman, means the imitation part, which perfectly sums up his character. But again, like, if we use that too, technically, um, uh, like, uh, Emily is also based on that. And their suggestion, oh, well, if that works for him, then it works for her, right? Emily Pope. Meaning that some people believe that Pope is false. So, and we've seen that in at least in the first the place, not the case. So, again, it's not always 100% accurate. It's just something to keep in mind as, okay, that's mildly interesting until we get I will show you! The shadow moved too fast to see. Where did it go? side of the door. Alright. Take two. And this one, this time around, does not have anything. Like word of power here somewhere. I'm just not seeing it. Like it might be on top of this. You know, what, let's let's head up to this. Maybe we can look down upon it and get a better idea. Found it? Are you sure? Not that I'm seeing. Sorry, Draco, you can't tell Roden not to do puns. That's <laughs> that's his job. <laughs> yeah, like the thing is, is like I don't expect like 
it's kind of impossible for any character in this game to be hiss because if you have one hiss, essentially everything is doomed. Everything is going to be wiped if one single hiss exists. It will infect everything because the hiss don't act like take or they don't act like these dark entities that have conscious will. Hiss are just a, it's just a virus that basically the second it infects one, it tries to spread to the other. There's not a lot of rational thought going on. There it is. Got it. Found it. You know, now that I'm using more flares, I want a little bit extra time on that. Hey there, Jules. Thank you so much. There's an encounter in this chapter with uh, Tim that I've seen most people miss. I'll let you know. Yeah, so I'm going to... I actually did look up to see how many Tim scenes there are. And there's five total. I've got four of them. So I do know there's one more in this chapter. I do not know where it is, but I will be on the lookout for it. Yeah, the only reason the hiss are around in the oldest house is because, well, they're stuck inside of it due to the building lockdown. And due to everyone having an HRA and Jesse being resonating with Polaris, the Polaris resonance allows her to be immune. That's the only reason people are surviving right now. Otherwise, yeah. So yeah, there's not going to be really any hiss here. I mean, if the hiss ever got into the dark place... I don't know, because when Hartman was taken over by the hiss, when he was already a Taken, it was basically implied that the only reason it actually succeeded was because the darkness inside of him was so separate from the dark place, its source. It either did not want to resist it, or it didn't have the strength to resist it. But if the hiss tried to possess something in the dark place, who knows? All right, let's get going. The theater appeared to be closed. Maybe the ticket could still get me in. Oh, yeah, you guys said something about Alice's photographs. Um, do I use these inside the theater? Without giving many details, is it, would I just use those in the theater? Please enjoy the film, sir. Or is this something I do uh, beforehand? Before I head inside. Patina, what about the Taken's with the red dot in the chest and Sagan part? So, Said, so, so all of the um, Taken in this game, it, they feel like different classifications of entities. Use them after. Okay, they're okay. Good. Just want to make sure. I just don't want to miss anything. Cold Casey. Time for a movie theater. The cinema lobby was a gateway to other realities on the silver screen. I could set a scene here. Am I crazy? I'm trying to remember a survival horror game that was set in the movie cinema. There might be one. But I'm liking it. I'm liking the setting. I felt like I'd been on this case looking for the cult of the word for a lifetime or more. The only case I'd ever been on. They would surface from the dark with their depraved acts of violence and fade back into the night, leaving behind bloody crime scenes and clues heavy with obscure meanings that led nowhere. Arriving at the cinema, I felt a monumental, terrifying revelation trembling before me, ready to open its jaws and swallow me whole. This place had significance to the cult. There was something to use there. See, what I'm loving about this entire section of like entire overarching story of Alan's plotline when it comes to Casey's investigation is it does three things. One, it lets you follow the plotline of Alan trying to find his way through this plot. Two, it shows you a plotline of the real life Alex Casey 
that was investigating this years back, I believe 2013 is when he did this investigation. But three, it also shows the plot of one of Alan's books, which was written before it happened for real. Which is just absolutely nuts. Okay, so we don't have a map of this place yet. Let's see if we can try to find a map. Popcorn, coffee for a dollar, small... Dude, a large popcorn for three bucks? Jesus Christ. A cola for two fifty? Jeez. A dollar for a shake? Oh my god, What? where is this place at and how can I get these prices? Stop writing at some point. Yeah, I can't stop. There's too much at stake. Yeah. So the imp between this video and what uh, Zane was talking about, it seems like Alan finally just said, "You know what? Screwed. I'm not even gonna try anymore." And was just gonna sit back and let himself succumb to the insanity of the dark place. Which really goes to show that he was not in any way responsible for this story. He didn't even want to write it, but Zane, or this version of Zane and Scratch wrote it, and that forced his hand to get involved, and therefore the rest of the plot came out. So I would... So he just started rewriting it to make it the best case scenario as he went along. So I... You can't really hold him responsible for a lot of what happens in the story. Alright guys, two seconds. I'm gonna go on a quick bathroom break and then I need to make a phone call, but I'll be right back guys. Two seconds.
All right, and we are back. So it looks like there's uh, some conversation about the hiss through the whole thing. I mean, yes, the hiss technically could think, but its prime directive was that of a virus, just to spread and consume. It would use the information it got in its host's heads to assist in that matter, but it really didn't think about playing games. It was just conquer. The only reason it managed to gain some degree of higher thinking is because it uh, infected Dylan Faden, who... Well, it didn't even fully infect him. He was still in control of himself. He It began to resonate with Dylan and D Dylan with the hiss. And Dylan's headspace was the one that was really making the uh, long-term plays. Like when he approached Mr. Door about potentially moving the hiss over into the other realities. All right. Let's poke our head around. Okay. I'm just really liking this location. Wait. Oh, it's an actual theater theater. I don't know if there's... I'm pretty sure there's movies, but this looks like one of the staging areas and doors backstage. There's the map. Beautiful. I'm guessing this is if uh, there's like a live stage performance here. Don't you love that if you're an actor that's come here to perform, they still make you pay for vending machines? Like, yeah, I know you're here to make us money, but you're still giving us more money, too. The main event was the murder. I had to find my way to it. So before we do that, we're going to explore as much as we can. No, Door did not allow uh, Dylan to do that. Because, he again, he's the door between the realities. Quote, and quote. At least that's the hypothesis as of right now. And Door said, yeah, no, I'm not opening that door for you. Not going to happen. Bullets, bodies, and bourbon. Based on the novels by Alan Wake. An Alex Casey film, The Final Casey, based upon the novels. So I'm presuming Final Casey is supposed to be the sudden stop. missing something okay so it looks like the restroom is the last place we can go oh my eyes you die here you lost don't write return to the word. I almost want to see a reference to Mira in here like we did in DLC. And it's not letting us. I would have loved if you just walked in there and there's some graffiti saying Miro is here. Just as a callback. All right. Time to make some changes. Dude, no. No one call Adi to clean that up. He's on vacation, guys. At least he's supposed to be on vacation until Alan dragged him into this. First step toward the murder site. I was making progress. Someone had barricaded themselves in the room. Okay, 
Let's see if anything's changed. I don't think it has, but we might as well check. That's a lot of popcorn. Ati and the janitors are involved in this one. Interesting. I think I've already read that, but I'm just reading it again. Maximum health by 15%. You know what? Let's do one of those. Let's do that. Is there another one going this way? I guess. No. Okay, so I do have to get into that little backstage area behind the concession stand. Hey there, Max. What's going on, dude? Yeah, just saw your uh, saw the cutscene with the Wake and Zane. Doesn't that basically confirm the multiple Zanes theory? That's not Zane, but a version of Like, I don't think it confirms it, but it just adds more for me. Because, like, like remember, like one crux of the theory is that the original departure manuscript was not intended to star Alan Wake. I forgot to mention this when I talked about this earlier. Is because remember halfway through the game, after we see uh, Walt Schneider get uh, killed by the Taken in episode four, I believe. Um, we come across one of the TV screens where Alan basically says, okay, I have now written myself into the story as its main character, which would imply that a different person was the main character in Departure before that. My hypothesis is Thomas Zane was the original main character of Departure, but when Alan had to change it, the original character had to go somewhere. He couldn't just say, oh, that person never existed, so he kind of wrote the story that, oh no, this is the story of Thomas Zane, who now went into the lake, and now Alan is repeating the same plot line. And that character he wrote that went into the dark place is this Zane that we're seeing now, who is desperate to get out. Not the original one that vanished into the lake back in the 70s. If that makes sense. Hey there, Archangel. Thank you so much for the donation, buddy. Uh, why does Zane seem to have better control than Alan in the dark place? He created the universe for himself and Barbara. What's stopping Alan? Well, the this is not the same Zane. I think that goes back to what I was just talking about. The Zane that created it is probably somewhere completely different. We've never met him before. He's in own pocket universe we've never seen. But this one, in lore, he has spent 50 years, 53 years inside the Dark Place learning how it functions. This is the fictional Zane that we're experiencing in this game. He has spent 53 years here. Alan has spent 13. So this one has 40 years more experience about how this dreamscape navigates. Like, I don't even think, uh, Max, that this version of Zane needs to be corrupted by Scratch. He could entirely just be someone who's gone crazy being stuck here for so long that they want... He just will do anything to get out, even if it means making a deal with the devil. So, I don't... It doesn't really even matter, to be 100% honest. Okay, we need to find a way to get in there. Okay, maybe I'm missing out because I just ran around the whole thing. I'm trying to find... Oh, we got a container right there. Am I missing something? Because I am I feel like I've gone around this entire lobby, but I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing the door I need to go through. Yeah, so like the dark place itself would be driving Zane insane, which is I think what we're seeing here. 
So there's a door in the back that lets him in. There's an echo in there. Maybe I leave and go outside and find another way in? No, I can't leave. Am I being dumb right now? Because I literally cannot find where to go. <laughs> I'm literally lost. Yeah, Retro Station. That's kind of what the ocean view is. It's because the, the ocean is the entire remedy verse, and if you're at the view, you can peek out at it from anywhere. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm checking all the side rooms. Everything seems to be locked. Then we have the bathroom, which also seems to be locked. Well, things I don't have the... Well, I don't really have the option to change the plot right now. I mean, I, I changed it once. To this. But yeah, I can't really... There's nothing else I can change here. I mean, Alan drew reference that there's something barricaded inside there. Someone got smacked with that. And there's no exit through here. Hey, take it easy, Max. Yeah, but like I can unwrite. Oh, 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 oh! I didn't realize I can undo it. How do I undo it? Oh, like that. I didn't realize you could the even. Story was affecting the scene. I didn't even realize you could do that. Okay, so let's rewrite it now that I'm inside the room. I also didn't even know you can pull those scenes off. That was where my confusion was. Okay, thank you. I would have been lost there for forever. Okay, we got another echo right there. It would do you a lot of good to talk, buddy. <laughs> it was an initiation ceremony. Ha. And so we made our new members believe. Two of New York's finest. They had performed endless favors to earn their place among us. We had something special waiting for them. And something very special for you, Alex Casey. Who's your leader? Alan Wake? Hmm? Scratch? Zane? Give me a name! <laughs> you will meet him soon enough. There was no end to the corruption. It fit the genre, it fit the so genre. I'd use it. 100%, but that was Ilma right there. Okay, now we're getting into another layer of meta here. Oh, gosh. So, if this is supposed to be, these events are supposed to be the real-life retellings of one of Alan's stories, did Kate, was, was the name Thomas Zane familiar with them before they even got here which no no there has to be some differences between the book he wrote and the Alex Casey's in in investigation of this but Ilma I don't think Ilma was actually involved here it's just they're making symbolic parallels between the cult of the tree and the cult of the wor word so you have Ilma as the leader of the trees so he's casting him as the leader of the word but like if this was what really happened then the second Casey Met Ilma would be like, oh, that dude, I freaking investigated this guy 10 years ago. No. So, yeah, that's a little different. Yo, nothingness, what's going on, buddy? How you been doing? Hey, Everos, um... Well, the thing is, is like, it's not that Alan could have changed things before the story played out. The act of him writing it is actively in real time creating the plot. 
So he can't just say that never happened and then move on about his day. He has to keep everything he previously wrote in the first draft of Departure and make it work into a second draft where he's the main character. That's why Alan and Thomas's stories basically rhyme. I mean, Thomas, his girlfriend, Barbara fell into the lake. He tried to write her back into existence, right? Thomas, his wife, Alice, fell into the lake, and he's trying to find a way to write her back into existence. It's basically the exact same plot, just literary echoes of one another. Which, from a piece of fiction, makes perfect sense, because he already wrote the story, so he kind of used the same generic plot to write his own story. Okay. New York's finest. A little bit closer. Definitely closer to what we're looking for. Let me see if we can go up on top. Because that seems like where we're supposed to go. I'm going to check all the rooms to see if anything's changed. Night, bullet ding, 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 nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Oh, wait, did I already get this one? Yeah, I already got that one. I forgot. Alright, let's go. Let's go see the show. Oh god, who let- I feel bad- shout out to anyone who's ever worked at a movie theater and has to deal with all of this crap. I mean, reminder, next time you go to the movies, clean up after yourself. Don't leave a job for someone else. Just common courtesy. Hear ye, hear ye! Oh, hi there. Urban legends circling Thomas Zane were a bottomless rabbit hole. I'd done some digging. To film freaks, he was a mythic auteur in the art house cinema. A rising star coming to America from Finland. But he only created one film. Tom the Poet. Before he went missing. Mirroring the vanishing of the main character in the movie played by himself. The biggest mystery was around his lost film and early work made in Finland, Nightless Night, rumored to have mystic properties. Some claimed it was a snuff film, that the ritual murder in the film was an actual murder. There were no known surviving copies, but the cult chased it as if it were their unholy grail just like Wake's books were. Very interesting. Okay, so again, like, this goes back to the whole point that I don't think Zane's really a filmmaker, or at least the original version of it, because, as he said, there's only been one film he's ever produced that has ever been seen, and they're saying he's a famous filmmaker that came over, like, well, he's, you can't really call him a famous filmmaker if he's only produced the one, and that was produced after he already arrived here. Anyways, guys, uh, two seconds. I just missed my call back. I will be right back. I'll take a phone call.
Sorry about that, guys. As I mentioned, um, we're celebrating my mom's birthday tonight, so I'm just getting calls about logistics and how everything's going to work. But we are back. Uh, thank you, White Wolf. Thank you so much for the donation, buddy. Uh, enjoy Nightless Night. My advice is get comfy. I definitely am right now. Okay, let's look around and then loot before we do anything else. Wait, wasn't the film Tom the Poet made before Alan Wake wrote Return? It's really difficult to say when it was written. Because as far as we know, the whole Tom the Poet as the uh, film only happened in 2022? Whenever the Alan Wake remastered happened. Because in the original version, the posters were just Tom the Poet talking about Thomas. But when we got the remastered version, they changed all the vi the assets for those posters to say, "Oh no, it's all just a um, it's all just a movie." Meaning that at twenty during that time, whenever the Alan remaster was released, is when chronologically in game universe when that film was made. I have a lot of heals right now, so let's just use one. I definitely will wish her a happy birthday for you guys. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so we have light that we can move now. Maybe we can move it to the stage? I've already gone into here. Yeah, that's just the stage to get on side path to get on stage. Sorry, I'm trying to be very thorough with what we're doing here, just in case I can find something. No, I don't think there is. Okay, well, I guess we're going to start changing the scene. Actually, let's change this. We're going to change the scene here to that. All right, and someone did tell me that I should probably put subtitles on once we start playing this, uh, when this play starts. Let me know when I need to switch the subtitles on, specifically. I don't know, did I say dildo no no? I mean, it sounds like something I do do. Again, I, I watched too much South Park growing up, so the whole kitties being a dildo scene, it's just, got stuck in my head. It, it warped my fragile little mind. So when something's annoying me, I'm like, ah, stop being a freaking dildo. Yeah, it, I, I do that. Everybody, you are all here for my I mean, I'm here for your entertainment. It has been such a long time since I've stood on a stage like this. I mean, like, anyone who doesn't know, I'm a former music student, so I used to do a lot of stage performances. I used to do pit orchestra. Where I was, like, down here, or I would do stuff on stage when I'm working with vocalists and stuff like that. Let's get out of here. That door is not working. Hope you all enjoy the show. Let's switch over to the other one.
that's not good. Quick. Stop stalking me through the... I don't like that. Go away. Go away. So they're placed on stage here. I'm presuming the two uh, NYPD officers were placed up here. Sadly, this theater is more packed than Helmet's theater. <laughs> Not throwing any shade over at Psychonauts. <laughs> Just sad. Ooh, projection booth. The cops had gotten their 15 minutes of fame with the cult. And it had been a scream. They were the murder victims. I had to find a way into the projection booth somehow. Grab it, grab it. There we go. Okay, so I need to find a way in. Uh, maybe it's in the Cult of the Word one, where this one exists. of clowns and funny masks and hoods pretending to be a secret society. Well, maybe it is you who's playing a role, Mr. Casey. A role carefully laid out for you. The puppet blindly performing the ritual steps for the glory of the cult. Huh? What the fuck have you been smoking? Nightless night. A clip of the lost film survived. You will see, Mr. Casey. In the Nightless Night, you will finally see. Nightless Night was Zane's film. It played a role in this story. This probably isn't the smartest move I've ever made. The light of the lamp shone out of the screen and revealed the door. Interesting. God, I love dream logic. It, it really makes you appreciate Trench's comments about navigating the Ocean View Motel. Okay, I'm gonna try something real quick before we continue on with this. Where he says that in order to for agents to be allowed to go into the Ocean View, they have to be trained in dreamscape navigation. Can I make the change here? No. Okay. I had to be at the scene to see and understand okay. it. I was wondering if you can change it while we're inside this hallway so we can make it up there, but I guess that's not the case. And honestly, I think that's why I'm so fucking... I love these so much, is because my brain works off of dream logic, so... <laughs> it just makes perfect sense to me. Oh, that's where the that's where the door is. Okay, thank you. 
light actually physically illuminated the door. Gotcha. Wick. I was out back out the into night. the night. The seedy alley away from prying eyes was a good scene for dark deeds. Let's freaking go. Okay, so this is the garage, the back lot, the theater. I need to find my way to the locked door behind us, which may open up into here. Because that lets us back inside. Okay. I don't like that. Moving on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and unlock our way back into the main part of the building. Just so that we have ease of access later. Nope, and we can't even do that. Never mind. I take back everything I just said. I should look at the plot board. Keep the story moving. I got you, Alan. Let me just do my thing. You gotta let the loot goblin roam free for a little bit. I wonder if I can actually crawl down here. No. Thank God. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. What do we got? Yes, give me the ammos, give me the ammos, give me the flares, give me all the flares. Beautiful, that's exactly what I needed. one of these over here. I know, Draco, I have an issue with collectibles. Yes, it is a problem. No, I am not seeking help for it. I do not. It is not a problem. And anyone who quotes that admitting you have a problem is the first step to solve the problem, no. All right, let's start at the beginning and work our way through. The scene here had changed. Go to the roof and find where someone fell. Someone had fallen to their death from the rooftop. This looks like we've got Il Ben Casey up there. So how do I get to the rooftop? Exactly. I can quit anytime I want. Wait. Can't get up there. Okay. Oh, I thought that was a ladder there for a second. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I see something, I see something. Maybe I had missed something on the plot board. Okay. Let's try the next one then, I guess. Police car felt important to the story. Let's not do that. I think the cult of the word is more important to this plot, though. In the city trapped in eternal night, 
They watch the film where the night never arrives, where the night hides in your mind. Why am I getting Max Payne vibes from this whole thing? Okay, so I think it is definitely Cult of the Word, which is the story that we need. Six sixteen. Um, I'm not sure if that's important or not. Like 2016, yes, because that's the events of Quantum Break, but I don't know much about that other thing. Alright, where's the ladder? How do I get on top of the roof? Let's look at the map. So we got the echo there. The garage goes out to the back of the break room. Editing room, projection central area, spotlights, rooftop. So somewhere we can get to the rooftop, but... Or maybe there's just one of those little dark spots that I need to do an echo with here that I can't find. Oh, sorry guys. I thought Alan said the police car is not important to the story. I thought that's what he said there. I thought he said it's not important. I was making progress. More echoes, but I can't find how to activate these echoes. Do, do, do. Nope. Dude, gotta love these puzzles. There it is. Found it. That's just what I needed. Off a finger or something for this initiation? Do you? Nah, yeah. I'm sure we'll just chant some ceremonial stuff. N nothing to it. Well, it's about time. We paid our dues, made plenty of their problems disappear, dumped all those nobodies down that chute. What we did or didn't do, it's all behind us now. We're going straight to the top, partner. Yep. Like we died and went to heaven. Sure, guys. Sure. Okay, so now we have more literary parallels here. Because rather than the cult of the word, the cult of the tree is what ended up killing these two. But because they were quote-unquote taken, they were inducted into the cult of the taken. And also, rather than throwing it down this chute here for the bodies, they threw down what's-her-face's um, body down the well over at the coffee world. Let me see if I have Barbara Morgan. I no, it wasn't Barbara Morgan. Was it Barbara Morgan? Monica Thompson. Monica Thompson fell down there. Okay. So I think that's it here. Let's swap back over. Let's the see. plot changes shape the world around me. I need to find where to put this light is what I need to do. Or maybe I need to use the other parts of the story to gain access to the roof and then swap it back. Put it into this.
No, really nothing here. Yeah, like, I, I figured that we'd have to do something with this truck, but at the same time, it's not letting us interact with it. Alice! Maybe this truck? Not that truck. Or maybe because we now know that Thornton and Mulligan threw things down that shoot, something will happen with the shoot. No, I don't think that's it either. Oh boy, okay. This is going to be one of those scenarios where this is so incredibly simple and I'm just not seeing it. back there. Okay. Let's see if any of the other ones... Got it. Got it. Beautiful. Okay, we're good. We're good! We got some progress. Let's move on. Um... No, there's nothing we can do about that first stage just yet. Straight to the top. The dirty cops look down at the city. Their city. They had committed repulsive deeds to get there. They told themselves it was worth it. All right. I got plenty of shotgun ammo, so I'm gonna use this for a little bit. There he is. It was locked from the other side. Okay. I, okay, we found where Tim is, but now we gotta find out how to get to him. Great. This is supposed to be the last one, too. And it'll give us all of our collectibles. Nope, this is just a save room. Alright. 
So Zane or uh, Scratch wrote the original manuscript. Then it appears, or like Zane and Scratch collaborated to write this story. And then after finding out it was happening, Alan got involved and says, "Ah, uh, no, 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 we're not doing that." Hey, Alan. It's good to see another sane face. Not sure how sane I'm feeling. Be careful out there, Tim. If you see me, make sure it's really me, not some psycho wearing my face. Sounds like you've been having a rough go. I've been there. The missing time. The aliens. The aliens? <laughs> aliens, you say? <laughs> missing time? It's the same thing I've been saying. The dreams. Sometimes I wake up in a completely different place missing entire days. I have no idea what happened, but I'm trying to find out. Things always get better if you just keep moving forward, Alan. Wait, what's this about aliens? Oh, uh, I was just convinced that everything going on with me was because of aliens. Abduction, oh. signals beamed into my head, that kind of thing. Now I know it's been door all along. I haven't ruled out him being an alien, though. <laughs> well, okay then. A vessel weapon, an object of great power. Missing time, I've already done that one. Are you crazy or having a dreams of RPG dice? Geometry, pure mathematical shapes contain energy. Oh my god, UFOs, polyhedrons, I see them in my dreams. Guys! Oh dear, what were we talking about yesterday the second we got into Tim's office? Because right here we have the octahedron, which is what the bird watcher found hovering over Cauldron Lake. And then this is the dodecahedron, which is the shape of both the CF, uh, CFR along with other things. And this one looks more like Hedron. Yeah, Hedron that was uh, stuck in dimensional research. Beyond the ocean, or the, uh, freaking Christ, not the ocean view. Ah, uh, the maze. Beyond the maze. They're doing something here. I mean, Dr. Darling was very obsessed with these types of geometric shapes. Like, all the door puzzles were based upon this stuff right here. Those are platonic solids. Clarify that, Bray. Okay, so all I'm seeing when it says platonic solid is in, in geometry, a platonic solid is a convex regular polyhedron in three-dimensional Euclidean space. Uh, being a regular polyhedron means the faces are congruent, regular polygons, and the same number of faces each meet with the vertex. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to do a lot more uh, study on what the hell that means, three-dimensional Euclidean space, <laughs> because I have no idea. Oh god, you guys means we have to do an entire lecture, a full video on geometry now. These are the only five, um, so you're saying these are the only five platonic solids. Okay. Okay. I'm wondering if these are just supposed to represent five tiers of reality. Who knows? So Euclidean space is the ordinary 3D physical space of every day, okay. Interesting. All right, well, let's just go ahead and get on going. Take it easy there, dude. Stay safe. You know Quantum Break 2 is going to dive fully into this entire concept, right? 
I mean, I keep hearing stories that uh, Remedy and Microsoft are talking right now, so this is going to be a thing in Quantum Break 2. So it looks like we got one more echo down here, which I already knew that was there. And then we got some stuff over here. No cat. Projector room is going to take us down there. King Farm, I only have one more Tim. I thought there was only five in the whole game. Technically, I found five of them. I'll trust you all, though. So if Hedron's vessel is an iso, um, icosahedron, that means symbolically the board and pyramid are inferior to Hedron. I mean, technically speaking, yeah, because if... Oh, I never even thought about that, because the board is technically an inverted black pyramid, which would be one of these shapes of platonic solids. Sonic Salt, we have the Pyramid, the Cube, the Dodecahedron, the Octahedron, and then what you call that, a nice sus something. I'm trying to find the comments again. Ice, icosahedron. It has more than 20 sides, which are not perfectly regular, so hedron is not technically an icosahedron. Okay. Interesting. So, technically, the only ones we do see is the board and the CFR, and technically, whatever they saw floating over the cauldron lake as an octahedron. Yeah, the CFR, Rafa, is the chronon field regulator. It's an object in Quantum Break, which this guy is the main character. Well, not him, but the actor who plays Tim Breaker is the main character, Jack Joyce, in Quantum Break. And it's very much implied that one of his lives is Tim Breaker and Jack Joyce are essentially the same entity. They're, they're very much implying that in this game. Actually, guys, you should know, um, who, whoever has watched previous streams of mine and other games know there is a dark version of Dean. I forgot what he was called, but he's very... I think he came out during the uh, Tears of the Kingdom playthrough. He's kind of messed up. Love from Hidden Machine fans. Hey, new bamboozler, how you doing? Actually, weirdly enough, me and Matt over at Hidden Machine, as soon as I finish the game, are planning some stuff. So hopefully, you'll see all that fun stuff come out later. Let's see if I can get that. Dr. Need? Oh yeah, because it's the backwards of... Got it. Adds one to flashlight. Ooh, that's actually really good. Marks all nearby resources and points of interest in Wink's map. That's also good. But I think I'm surviving without it. The extra flashlight is going to be more combat oriented. It's confirmed. Yeah, Dr. Need is my evil twin. I need to find the, the plot element in a scene. Okay, I need to find the location where I can change the rooftop. Somewhere around here, there is a location where Casey and Ilma was up top.
right here? I think it's right here. Yeah, it's right down there. Guess we're doing this. I changed the story. And with that, the dark place changed. Don't you fucking move, or I'll blow you away. You got me, Mr. Casey. I'm all yours. Go ahead. Ask that burning question in your mind. How did you do it? How did you get me into that film clip without my remembering it? Talk to me! Damn it! You've seen the film? Good, good. Now you're ready to meet the Grand Master. He's waiting for you in the projection booth where everything will be revealed. Where he will project a new reality onto this one. And now, Mr. Casey, I've played my part to the end. No, no, no! Crazy bastard! Why did he jump? The projection booth. Was that where I find the murder site? Seems like it. Yeah, it's the Night Springs theme that uh, Tim's humming over there. Speaking of which, I'm still trying to figure out what Dor meant by our Night Springs. The collaboration they did. Too many of you, too many of you, go away, go away. Yeah, you, you can't uh, disrupt the birds in early break. If they're comfy on your shoulder, you just gotta let them do their thing. Thank you so much for the donation, buddy. Make sure you find Tim Breaker's last location before doing the next chapter. Um, I don't know where the next Tim location is, and I don't know where this ends. So Dream Asylum, I don't know if we have any confirmation that the FBC is in any way and that knows anything about Mr. Doar's existence. And in terms of the slide projector, we don't know how that all works out. Because we don't know the details about the ordinary OWE about because where the kids found it was in the dump site. And according to their testimony was that the garbage just randomly shifted in the dump site, and miraculously, the slide projector was there. Now, that sounds like something could have happened. 
Hey, Scorpion. I'm playing on normal right now. I mean, I was originally on hard difficulty, but I uh, was dying way too much, so I said screw it. I don't know why you would be asking for a pineapple, Kaneda. Pineapple about what? you. We got something over here. Which I don't know how to get into that area. Oh, the last Tim? I mean, really, like, the only thing I'd want to know is if I can find it before going into here, which is the projection booth. Like, can I find it before going into the projection booth? That's really all that I care about. After that, it's kind of just like, meh, whatever. Okay, so I'll do the projection booth and then we'll see what we find from there. Oh, I could find it right now, technically. I mean, like, I'll try to do it right now, sure. If that's feasibly possible. But... I feel like I've been everywhere I need to be right now. I can do it all the way back. That was a dick move there, son. I mean, let's just, like, the only reason I will say give me a pineapple is if it's something that I'm legitimately missing right now and there's no way for me to grab it later or if I'm legitimately stuck. I'm not really stuck, it's just I potentially haven't gotten to that point in the story yet. Fine, guys. I'll do it right now. Just tell me where to go. You guys seem really insistent that I do it right now. Just fine. And yes, I did bamboozler. I saw that he survived the gunshot. Or that it was a fake gunshot. I'm just gonna sit here then until someone tells me what they want me to do. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, I'm just gonna stop reading chat right now. Wick. Yeah, like this is the point where everyone's ripping me in five different directions and it doesn't really help anyone. I'm just going to stop playing until everyone makes a consensus. Spiral door. Oh boy, here we go. And I was told to put subtitles on I for this section. I found myself in a maze of film equipment. There had to be a way to the projection booth from here. I wasn't alone.
Let's do the one other than the break room first. And I cannot. I'm here, you son of a bitch. Show yourself. Crazy mask of my hands. You're a clown in a mask. Started. We're in a spiral. A loop within a loop. I had to keep going. I'm here, you son of a bitch. Show yourself. Who, was it? Who said that? The crazy mask in my hands. You're a clown in a mask. I'm not the one wearing a mask here, you moron. Ah. So it sounds like Casey's, uh, confronting himself right now. The Casey in the story was losing it. I wasn't far behind. Okay, well, I guess this is the exit. <sighs> I was back at the beginning again. I had to keep going. Find a way to the murder site. See, it's kind of funny considering that every time we have these quote unquote loops, it's three times through the loop. Every time Saga goes into an overlap, it's looping three individual times, which is just a callback to American Nightmare, where Alan got in the habit of doing three consecutive loops to get through the plot. That was the first time we see him use that as a function. I'm here. Hello? Hey! Show yourself! Who, who, was, who said that? Huh? Shit. Shit. I skipped the dialogue. It's gone. But I saw someone. Oh, this is nice. Ugh. Oh, great. Here we go. could have told you that. Anyone who knows the hero's journey could have told you that, Alan! How can you forget about the most interesting part of the story? Because no joke, the most interesting part of any story that follows the hero's journey is the initiation phase, because that's where the trials are. That's where the magical weapons are. That's where the dragons are. I was back at the beginning again. I had to keep going. Find a way to the murder site. I'm here, you son of a bitch. Show yourself. Shut up. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. You can run, but your mom can't shoot. Your mom can get all you fuckers. Casey? Who's there? <laughs> Look, you got the wrong guy. I'm not Alex Casey. I only play him in the movies. <laughs> He's just a fictional character. What, what, what? What's going on here? Hi, Sam. You don't have to kill me. You don't have to go get that knife and stab me. You can just give up and go back. Forget about 
the ritual sacrifice to open the way forward. The ritual sacrifice to open the way? No. <laughs> don't do it. You don't have to become a monster. I've never heard Sam Just act. leave the knife where it is. In the back. And go. A knife in the back? Everything about this was absurd. Our dialogue forced and ridiculous. In desperate need of another pass. But I'd play along to see where it took me. What the me. hell? What the hell? Let's forget about the knife. Don't, don't go looking for the knife. There is no <laughs> knife. It's hovering in the air right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you guys. I have never heard freaking Sam go so hard. And I've never like seen him actually like, act, act. Specifically, other than in that scene when Scratch kidnapped him and forced him into the dark place to write for him. You guys remember that? Like, in the uh, American Nightmare promo material. Hold on, let me see. Actually, I'll just pull this up real quick. Let me pull this up on YouTube. In case anyone hasn't seen this. Um, it's American Nightmare Developer Diaries 3. Uh, where is this? American Nightmare Developer Diaries number three. There we go. Give me a sec. I'm trying to find the right spot of the uh, thing. Okay, here we go. So, let's do this real quick. Just for the fun of it. Throw some desktop audio on. And the legend and has looks like I can't hear this. Maybe you guys like can. So there's Scratch out in the background right there. If you didn't see him bobbing the ground. So we are way in the back of the scene. This is Mr. Scratch. Here. He broke Using into the remedy the offices during this whole of, scenario. Of a serial killer. While they're Mr. talking Scratch about American Nightmare. Wake, uh, leaving him and messages, there's Scratch right there. <laughs> cut, the cut out turned into him. Yeah, and personally... I think uh, he's quite and possibly the coolest, the most disturbing up, bad guy ever seen in video games today. But that's just me. Yeah. But right flash here. Bangs, flares, and flashlights. So this and is the point of where yeah. I mean, it's, the dark it's really presence intense comes action. down, you're dodging grabs your Sam, and you're using your crossbow doing some to fight out of the picture. He gets kidnapped and, so forth. It's, it's a high and taken into the dark place. Sequence. And the enemies keep attacking. They become and stronger. And forced to write for Scratch. And there, yeah, there's an entire section where literally Sam Lake is stuck in the dark place by Mr. Scratch, forced to write a manuscript for him. And now we see the real Sam Lake here. I'm curious if this is the same one. They got kidnapped. <laughs> I actually have to stab him. Oh, gosh. A knife. Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't! You'll be sorry! Yeah, that was 11 years ago, guys. <laughs> oh, what dear. the fuck? <laughs> this is so freaking cool. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Coffee World, for some reason. I was getting close. any sense is in your psychotic brain as a fictional character in the story you fulfilled your purpose you brought the writer of the story here you can go now casey no, no, no i'm not going anywhere before i get some answers how was i in that movie how, why does all this feel so familiar what who the fuck are you who the fuck am i no you're in a computer game Max. And welcome to you, Alan Wake. What the hell? This is the ritual to lead you on. 
We are just one step away from your final destination, Mr. Wake. But first, here is an unanswered mystery for you. If Casey was fictional, and you assumed his role as the detective, are you now fictional too? Whose story are you living, Mr. Wake? The visions were getting under my skin, coming too close for comfort. Not a separate layer, but mingling with my own reality in the dark place. I mean, like, we already know there's multiple Allens, too. Because every time he projects himself. So, multiple Allen theory. This is getting some more ground here. You're in a computer game, Max. <laughs> if, does anyone remember uh, Max Payne 1 when... Uh, What's her face? Miss Horn overdoses him with a Valkyr, and he has those visions answering the phone call. And the person on the end of the other end of the phone tells him that, "Yeah, you're in a you're in a video game, dude. That's where you exist." And this also gives me never-ending story Wait. vibes. Dead end. This can't be right. Did I miss something? No, you didn't miss anything. Where the whole point of the story is to get the characters, to get the reader to be involved in the story. Back to Coffee World. The murder site. What is the mask was the key? What is going on here? I was traveling deeper into the dark place. The poem on the wall was growing at the same pace, dogging my footsteps, like my unwanted shadow moving in the corner of my eye. It wasn't my writing. I didn't know what it was. A terrible prophecy. A curse looming over me. A pale balloon in the sky float in deeper sink. Night springs when bright falls, for this sleeper the surface disturbed. The reflection now a traitor, in the cavity of the skull turned to a crater. This is the ritual to lead you on. Your friends will meet him when you're gone. Again, this is more Thomas Zane poetry. Because that line at the very end is just written right out of uh, the Bright Presence slash Thomas Zane we see at the end of the first game. Funny as hell. Yeah, it's the worst thing I can think of. <laughs> can I open this door? Oh, that's how I get back downstairs. This was in the projector booth. This is how I could help her. And this is where they meet. Saga Anderson, listen. I, I've been tricked. Scratch wrote returned. I, I tried to fix the story, but he stopped me before I reached the end. He has it now. It's the key to escape. What do you mean, escape? I mean, oh, Scratch. I need to stop him. I need to stop him before he gets out. He already got out. He's after Alice. I'm still trapped, but I'm making progress. I wrote you in to be the story's hero. Scratch made a horror story. I need to match the genre. It has to be dark, but the hero can break through, save her family, save us all. Save her family? Are you talking about my family? Yes. Whatever you're doing, it's working. You just need to keep going. Did we have family in the horror story? Closer now, closer than ever before, but 
But there was no time to lose. Everything was hanging in the balance. I could still lose it all. Parliament Tower. I had to make it work this time. I could stop Scratch, get the manuscript, fix its ending. Yep, and the third cycle. upon loops. Hello there, Poe. This is a twisted version of it, though, where it's just cycles of three over and over and over again. Oh, no. New song. The pirates. Light is a poisonous, poisonous dart. Okay, he works. Seeking out the darkest part. Forever, forever, forever oh your heart. No, at that point. Yeah, like, I don't know who Saga thinks she's talking to. I think Saga's still under the impression that Alan is has written everything and doesn't think that Scratch, other than being a monster, is really involved. So she, again, we were talking about reality tunnels the other day when it came to Ilma and Yako and the Cult of the Tree. It's the same thing with uh, Saga. She doesn't have all the information, so she's making snap judgments based upon the information given to her. Hmm... At this point, we just gotta finish, guys. Crap. Okay, so a quick question. Um, from what I understand, the game locks me out of playing the next Alan Wake section. It forces me to go back to Saga. Um, one, is that true? And two, how long is the next Saga section? Because, again, I do have a second, uh, a second birthday I have to get to. But I don't have to leave for maybe about four hours. So I might be able to get the next Saga chapter done if that's the case. Poisonous dart. <laughs> Oh, so it does not lock you out. Max couple of hours. Okay. I believe the Parliament Tower locks and then tells you to go back to Sagas. Okay, okay, that's fair. All right, so what we're going to do right now then is I am going to go ahead and close out this stream. And I'm going to immediately start up a new one. I need to take a quick break. Grab something to munch on real quick. And you can expect probably in about 20, 30 minutes we'll get going on the next section of it. All right. So just stay tuned. You can literally in a few minutes see the notification for the next stream that's going to be going uh, live on the channel. So we're just going to go that rat route for the time being and we'll continue on with Alan's story from there up until the point where it locks us out. All right, guys. So I'm going to be closing out. Thank you all for hanging out and joining me. We will get started again in probably about 20 minutes or so.